Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta three has been out for a few days and there's even more new features to talk about that have been found since the initial iOS 17 beta three is out. What's new video. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about the overall experience since I've been using it full time on my iPhone 14 pro max, as well as my iPad pro. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 9,100 votes and 177 comments. I've looked at all the different comments, compiled a list of the overall issues or how it's going as far as the experience, not only on iOS 17 beta three, but also iOS 16.5.1 and iOS 16.6 beta four. So we'll talk about all of that, but first let's talk about a new app update. If we go into the app store this week, Shazam was updated so that it can recognize songs within TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, as you can see here. So if you want to use that, you can, the odd thing is you could kind of do that already while it was playing, just using the control center, tapping on the Shazam icon, but now it will specifically recognize that within those different apps. Also one little note I wanted to make is if you're using threads, I'm now on there as well. If you're using threads and maybe you want to add a picture, it will crash regularly. The way you can get around this, if you're on iOS 17 is go into your photos. We'll go over maybe to the wallpaper from today, go to the three dot menu, go to copy. And if you go back into threads and then you go to post something, all you have to do is paste this and it will auto fill and paste it there. So if you can't add a photo, if we go down, maybe delete this within threads, add a photo. Maybe we'll add this one, hit add. It crashes the app every time. So you can copy and paste. That's a workaround until they update the app. Now, one of the new features in iOS 17 beta three is if we go into messages and within messages, we have the little plus arrow to the left of messages. This allows us to add different things. And there's a little tip or trick that you can use to quickly go into one that you use regularly. So right now, if I double tap on the plus button, you'll see here, it brings up photos. The way you can do this is go into your plus menu there, and maybe you want it to bring up audio every time drag that out to the right, drag it sort of in the same area where the plus button is go back, double tap, and it will go right into your voice message. I don't know if this is the intended behavior, but it's a little tip if you want to use your regularly used maybe app here and use it quickly. So again, double tap and it brings us right into it. So it's a nice workaround. Now standby is one of the new features we have with iOS 17. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this as they've updated it a little bit. If we go into standby, we'll just connect it here with our dock. Give it just a moment here. Once it goes into standby mode, you have your different widgets and things that you can go through. And if you tap on the widget, now you have the option to open it within an app tap on that. It brings it up into the clock. If I lock it again, give it a second to go back into standby, maybe switch to stocks here. It'll bring us into stocks. So you'll want face ID and then it will bring us right into that stock. So that's something that's nice. There's also new sort of splash screens if you've never been in standby before and you actually activate it for the first time. So maybe we'll try it on the iPhone 11 since I haven't used it there. So let's plug in the iPhone 11, rotate it into landscape and lock it. And the first time you go into standby, you'll see it says, welcome to standby. We can tap continue and then it brings us into it. We can switch between different things as far as widgets, press and hold. It wants face ID. So let's use the passcode and within standby, if you press and hold on a widget, you can go in and add new ones or just switch them, remove them and more. So it's nice that they've updated that on all the phones. And then you have that new splash screen. If we go into the control center and press and hold on the timer option, we have the option to start a timer. And once we start it, we have the option to add another with beta two, this wasn't there. So if we hit start, we don't have the option to add another, but we can pause it. So now we can add another timer. It brings us right into our timers, set another one, and then we can add another. So that's great that there's a little option to do that, making it a little easier within settings under Safari, under the option for profiles, we have some new glyph options. So we have a bunch of new ones. You'll see here with beta two on the left, beta three on the right. We don't have a three dot menu where we can add a bunch of different icons or styles. So we can change this to whatever we want, adjust the color and much more back within settings under camera under preserve settings, we have a new option for depth control. This has been updated to preserve the depth settings for photos, portrait and cinematic modes rather than automatically resetting it. And if we go into the camera, you'll see here, if we go to video, of course it will preserve those different settings, but we also have a new option that's showing ProRes SDR. If we tap on it, 
you'll see that we can enable ProRes, but we have to actually switch it to HDR in the camera menu. So it will tell us what we're in as far as SDR, HDR. It's just a little visual update there. Within photos, if we go to maybe an image of a pet, so we have a cat here, we have a little cat icon. This was changed to just a general paw print in beta two. You'll see here, if we go to the next one, on the right is beta three, on the left is beta two. Beta two has the paw print, now we have a little image of a dog. Also, if we go to maybe an album here, you'll see that it recognizes the album music, but it doesn't technically work yet. So if we tap on this, it doesn't seem that it recognizes it just yet. That wasn't in beta two, but it looks like in the future, we'll be able to use visual lookup with albums if we have a screenshot or a photo of it. When using Apple CarPlay, we'll connect it to our CarPlay device here. Give it a second to connect with the iPhone. And when you're connected, if we go into music, down at the bottom of music now, there's a new icon for SharePlay. Tap on it. It will give you a QR code so you can share it with people nearby in the car and share different music libraries together. Also, there's an option here for AirPlay as well. So if we tap on this, you can now AirPlay to different things that are around you. Now I showed this in the iOS 17, everything new in Apple CarPlay video as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Back within music, if you're playing to something else, such as your desk speaker or maybe a HomePod, the icon has been updated for many people. So if we go into our lock screen here, you'll see that the icon is a HomePod. Some people are seeing an all new icon here. I didn't see that difference myself though. Widgets get a few different updates. If we go over to our widgets here, you can see we have the large battery widget and the font has been updated slightly. So that's something you may or may not notice right away, but that's new. And they've also updated the clock widget. So if we go and maybe add one, you'll see the clock widget no longer has the transparent option. We just have a white background now. I hope they bring the transparency option back as it kind of looks nice on some of the different home screens. Within settings, if we go down to privacy and security, then we go to location services, scroll all the way to the bottom, go to system services. We no longer have micro location. They've removed this. You you can see it with beta two on the left where we have micro location here. It's completely gone with beta three. Maybe they'll bring it back or maybe not. They never really told us what it did either. In Apple fitness, the first time you go into it, you'll have a new splash screen. This isn't replicatable in beta three, but Steve Mosier posted this on Twitter where there's a new splash screen video for Apple fitness. There's also a possibility of letting people know you're actually sending messages from your Apple vision pro. So all of that code is here. You'll see privacy section and weather settings has been fixed in beta three and much more. So if you want to see all of that, be sure to follow him on Twitter as well. Now, also one thing I wanted to mention has to do with Apple watch. If you're running watch OS 10 beta three, don't reset it or a bunch of stock apps will stop working properly. I saw this actually warned from some people on Twitter. And if you actually completely reset it when you're using it, apparently a lot of those stock apps just won't reinstall properly. So you may have to actually wait until beta four for those to show back up again. I'm having issues here on watch OS 10 beta three with it showing the weather in the little complication. So there's a few issues here and there. Now, as far as the overall experience on iOS 16.5.1, I really haven't heard many people say there's an issue with it. Most people say that it's fairly stable. It's really lasting them throughout the day for the most part. If there were any complaints, it's mostly just battery life, but most people say it's much better than previous updates. The same is true with iOS 16.6. .6. I actually have it on a different device here on my iPhone 14 pro. I use it to record many of the shorts videos and things I do, and I haven't had a single crash whatsoever. It's running quite well, no issues at all. And it seems to be holding up really well. Most of you say the same, and we'll look at the comments a little bit later. As far as iOS 17 beta three, well, the overall experience is good. It seems to be pretty good, but there's some bad things as well as far as bugs. So first thing I wanted to talk about is the camera improvements. We showed that in the previous video last weekend with beta two, it seemed to be much improved. Others saw the same thing. So I thought we'd compare it again and see how it goes between 16.5.1 and 17 beta three, just to make sure those actually stick and it's much better. So I'll take a few photos here and we can take a look. I'll make sure that raw is turned off as far as the photos go as well.
it seems they've gotten rid of some of the over sharpening. It's actually more natural tone and more what you see is what you get. Maybe the iPhone 13 pro max here in the photo is a little oversaturated, but in general, I think the photos look much better and the white balance is much better on the right here, as you can see with 14 pro max on 17 beta three. So let me know your experience so far. If you've seen any differences, if it's staying quite good with beta three compared to beta two, let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as overall bugs that have been fixed, well, there's a few things that are worth mentioning. One of those is withdrawing money from Apple savings. So if we go into the wallet and if you're using an Apple savings account, withdrawing money seems to be much better. Most people report they haven't had any issue whatsoever withdrawing money or depositing money where we did with beta two. Also the copy and paste bug is fixed. So maybe you're pasting a link from one application to another. It seems to work fine. I showed that earlier with threads, no issues there. It's not prompting me over and over and it's much better. If you use shortcuts and you're dismissing a shortcut pop-up menu that works properly again. So you won't get stuck with that. And also on the iPad, the health app icon has been fixed. So that was an issue before I showed where if we go over here, the health icon looks normal. And this was true of a few other icons as well. Now there are quite a few bugs in this one though. Apple's still working on it. It's an early beta, but there are some bugs. And the first one has to do with Siri. Oftentimes when you activate Siri, it says, I'm sorry, I don't understand as after you actually ask a question. Also, we've had crashes with different apps with threads and different things like that. I actually had a different money app crash on me. My banking apps have worked fine, but different things that I use to track that have crashed on me. We still have the notification bug where it just sort of jumps in and out. As you can see there, it's not working properly and why they haven't fixed that yet. I'm not sure. And also some people are actually getting duplicate notifications. I haven't seen this myself, but a few people have. Also text message forwarding to my Mac is not working that well. So I have that turned on where I maybe send a message to someone with iMessage. It should show up on my Mac and iPad without a problem. Oftentimes it's delayed or doesn't show at all until I fully close messages and then go back in. So it's fairly buggy, but there are some good things as well that I mentioned. As far as the release notes, let's take a closer look at those. We'll go into the feedback app here and within recent activity, you can see we have our beta three notes. Now this wasn't there when we did the initial what's new video, they hadn't updated this. So there's quite a few known issues still, but there's also new features. You can see that they mention sometimes they don't update all of these, but a new feature would have to do with spatial audio. You'll see here accessibility. There's known issues with voiceover we might not speak predictive text in some text fields, and we can go on and on. There's pages and pages of resolved issues and known issues and just new features. So there's workarounds and more. So this is very much a work in progress and still being worked on. As I've mentioned before, early betas tend to be a little bit more buggy and then become more and more stable as time goes on. But you'll see there's many different issues here and many resolved issues as well, but it still needs to be worked on. If you're having an issue, make sure you submit it in the feedback app, but make sure you check it first to see if they already know about it since they'll be working on it otherwise. As far as performance, well, that's one of the great things about this performance is great. Whether that's ProMotion, opening apps, I've really seen no stuttering whatsoever. That one just reloaded, but performance in general is just super fast and much faster than beta two going into different apps, going into different, maybe selecting something, scrolling, everything just seems to be much, much faster this time around. To go along with performance, the overall heat of the device is much better than it was on beta two. Right now it's nice and cool. After the first day or two, it actually cooled right down and there's no issues. If we take a look at the thermal camera, we have about 88 and I've seen up to 92 degrees Fahrenheit, but typically it looks like it's cooling down a little bit. If we switch to Celsius, you'll see that at the hottest point, we're at about 33.7 degrees Celsius. So it's doing pretty well overall, staying fairly cool, especially for an early beta. As far as battery life, well, that's been maybe a little bit better for me, but it's still an issue. So if we go into my battery life here, go to battery, battery health and charging, you'll see I'm down to 92% and I have 230 cycles and coconut battery says I'm closer to 94%. So I'm not sure hundred percent, which one's accurate, but either way I've had 230 cycles since iOS 16 betas used a lot more power than previous betas did with iOS 15. Over the last 10 days, let's take a look today. I've used a little over 50% of my battery and have three hours and 15 minutes of screen active time, two hours of screen idle time. 
Yesterday, I had four hours and 40 minutes of screen active time and five hours and 31 minutes of screen idle time. It's actually a little bit better as far as overall life, as you can see here, where I was only getting about two to maybe three and a half hours with similar battery usage before. Now we've bumped up maybe a half an hour to two hours. So it's definitely a little bit better. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta three, at this point, I would probably wait. We're waiting for the public beta release. And if you don't have betas installed already, I would just hold off. If you do though, then of course, install this update if you're already on beta two. This one seems to be much better performance wise, and we should be testing and seeing if our apps work with it and reporting any issues to Apple with it. As far as iOS 17 public beta release, if we go into the calendar, I would expect it as soon as Monday. That's what Apple did last year. However, we don't really know as Apple hasn't said anything. So it could be Monday, it could be later in the week or even the following week. Apple actually hasn't said. Last year they released beta three, then on the following Monday they released a beta three re-release and the public beta. So we could see something similar or they could change it up. So far, we haven't seen iOS 16.6 .6 beta five or RC release, which we expected already this week. So I guess next week we'll definitely have that. And iOS 17 beta four will probably be a couple weeks out and then we'll switch to weekly betas. So typically, in a couple of weeks, maybe the 17th or 18th or 19th, somewhere around then we'll have iOS 17 beta four and then weekly betas all the way up until the final release, which is expected in mid September. So that's what we can look forward to. As far as the overall comments this week, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of those. Alfredo Villanova 365 says, hi Aaron, currently I'm on iOS 16.5.1 on an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And so far it's been phenomenal. No issues with the battery, performance still works as expected, and I personally haven't experienced no bugs whatsoever. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. iOS 17 Beta 3 on iPhone 14 Pro. Can't seem to use the camera at the moment, just looks like it's forever trying focus in some kind of loop. Personal voice option and keeps vanishing pretty stable. Otherwise birdhouse Finch said iOS 17 beta three on iPhone 13 pro. Okay. Battery life definitely better than beta two. The main bugs I experience are with messages, especially in threaded replies and turning the phone in landscape. XEZ runner says beta three on iPhone 14 pro here immediately noticed the improvement in smoothness, but not much else. Battery life has improved a lot in low power mode specifically no change with it off keyboard is still buggy editing posters and wallpapers still heats up the device. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta three. If I find any more features, I'll be sure to share them in a follow-up video later on. And of course, be sure to check back for the public beta as early as next week. Let me know if you found anything else though, in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.